Hello, welcome to my lecture recital titled Translating from Cello to Percussion, Adapting Britain's Cello Suite from Marimba and Mallet Station. This presentation is the culmination of my independent study with Beverly Johnston, in which I picked a topic of interest related to performance. I actually started this Britain project two years ago, and I'm very happy to be able to finish it in the winter semester of 2022 and share it with you all. Now let's time travel back to my days at Boston Conservatory at Berkeley. One of my teachers, Boko, was Marimba's Nancy Zeltzman. Nancy offers a course titled Marimba Transcription, which many of my friends have taken. I was mesmerized by my colleagues' projects and realized that there are many pieces which sound good on percussive keyboard instruments. You might have noticed that I used the term adapt instead of transcribe in my presentation title. Let me interject some definitions here. From Nancy's book for Mallet Marimba Playing, she quotes an interview she did with Gunther Schuller, where he explains three terms, adaptation, transcription, and arrangement. Adaptation is used when a piece of music written for an instrument is being played on another instrument, in this case, playing the cello suite on marimba and mallet station. A transcription process is notating a piece of music from a recording without referring to the score. The transcription could be performed on the original instrument or be adapted for another instrument. Lastly, arrangement refers to arranging a piece in a way which one adds original ideas to an existing piece of music. For example, reharmonization, adding a new rhythmic groove, or altering the structure. Here's an example from the Toronto Tableau Ensemble. My teacher Riteshji did an arrangement of Beethoven's Ode to Joy from Symphony No. 9. He added a drone, changed it to a 7-beat groove, and changed the structure. Now let's focus on adaptations. Adaptation is a very common practice in percussion playing. Since the solo percussion repertoire has only been around for less than 100 years, many percussionists expand the style of their repertoire through looking into pieces written for other instruments. Repertoire for guitar is especially idiomatic for us. Cello is a great choice as well. When one thinks of cello suites, Bach's cello suites definitely come to mind. However, as much as I love Bach's cello suites, I do not want to include them in my active repertoire for two reasons. First, these suites are too well known. My performance or recording would just be another iteration of a Bach cello suite. Second, written a few hundred years ago, Bach's cello suites do not employ extended techniques. Hence, adapting it for the marimba would not invite much creative input and it might end up being an inferior version of the original. When I work on an adaptation, I'd want it to sound like it's written for percussion and not trying to sound like the original instrument. Nancy encourages her students to play adaptations of lesser known pieces. My initial search for a cello suite was a failure. However, I became interested in Britain's music in early 2020 and found that he has three cello suites. I leaned towards the first suite because I thought it would translate well onto percussive keyboard instruments. Let me now give a brief overview on the suite. It was written in 1964 for Rostropovich. The structure is shown on the slide. It is in a quasi returnello form with four canti as the anchors and six numbered movements which is similar to Bach cello suites. However, instead of dance genres, Britain drew inspiration from vocal genres, as well as non-dance Baroque instrumental music.
Britain's use of multi-voiced writing in his cello suites intrigues me. The first thing that struck me was the chorale style of the canti. Here is a score excerpt from Canto Primo. You can see that Britain created the sustained atmosphere through the use of tied notes. Let's give it a listen. After listening to this movement, I thought to myself, I could not simply play this sustained passage by rolling on the marimba. At the time, I fixated on the vibraphone. Other than using different registers, Britain creates contrasting voices through different timbres and extended techniques. I will now play the beginning of movement 4, Marcha, which uses harmonics and colenio. Here is the beginning of the fifth movement Borkdong, which means drone. There are three voices in the opening of the movement, the drone, pizzicato, and arco. Now let's talk about the instrumentation of my adaptation. I've mentioned my initial thought of using a vibraphone for the canti. For the non-percussionists in the room, the range of a standard 3 octave vibraphone is from F3 to F6, while a 4 octave vibraphone expands it both ways to C. Hence, playing the cello suite on a vibraphone would require a 4 octave instrument and I would have to transpose the music an octave higher. Since I want to include the suite in my active repertoire, I have to take accessibility into account as well. Four octave vibraphones are actually rarer than I thought. One of my proposed solutions was to buy five vibraphone bars from C3 to E3 and bring them with me to performances. However, that leads to another problem of a dampening system. For some reason, Owning five vibraphone bars seemed really cool to me. I latched on to the idea until last November when I discussed with Bev and made my final decision of using the mallet station. I bought my mallet station in April 2020, partly under Nancy's influence, but also thinking that investing in a mallet station is a better use of money than to rent acoustic instruments just for the summer. It was the only keyboard instrument I had in my tiny apartment during the lockdown in Boston from April to August. Throwback to April 2020, I was so excited about this project. I created a document with my plan and anticipated challenges for realizing the suite, both with the mount station alone and beyond that, which is now. I learned some of the movements on the mount station and most importantly, learned how to program patch changes using the application main stage, which I'm still using today. Here are two excerpts from that summer. The first one is Canto Primo with a vibraphone patch. Shout out to my former teacher Doug Perkins for giving me my first lesson on EQ and reverb and making the Logic Pro vibraphone and marimba sound more like real instruments.
The next excerpt is taken from the fourth movement, Marcha, with constant shifts between Tibetan singing bowls and marimba patches. I used a physical score back then and used my Bluetooth pedal to change patches. Little funny story. Later that summer, I was able to record two movements on a 4.3 octave marimba. That summer, I played on the mount station so much that I forgot how it felt to play on a real marimba. I got a comment from Doug that my strokes on the marimba looked as if I was playing on a mount station. I rewatched those videos while I was preparing for this presentation. They were pretty awful, so I won't share them with you today. Anyway. Summer ended and I moved back to Hong Kong. I intended to record the whole suite, but was busy with DMA applications, so I abandoned the project for one and a half years. Fast forward to this semester, I resumed this project and basically had to relearn everything. Soon after, I realized that there is a lot to unpack in addition to learning the notes of a 25-minute suite. Now, I will discuss the challenges of adapting this work for marimba and mallet station. I'm dividing this part into two big sections. The first is logistical issues, and the second is translating cello techniques onto percussive keyboard instruments. First, on the surface level, parts of the piece are too fast for my slow hands. For example, the last movement, called Moto Perpetuo, is made up of a constant stream of 16th notes in 152 BPM. I slowed it down while keeping its energy and took some notes out on the last page. Second, I had to think about the transitions between movements. With all the movements marked ataka, I have to present the piece in a unified manner. The cellist is being asked not to put down their bow during pizzicato movements so that they could perform the ataka. However, during my run-through with Bev, we realized that the act of ataka might occasionally make the transitions awkward, especially with mallet and instrument changes. Hence, we decided to add brief pauses in between certain movements. The third one is kind of a minor issue, which is navigating among three pedals. One Bluetooth pedal for iPad page turns, one pedal connected to the mallet station for sustain, and the last one connected to my computer for patch changes. Moving on to the next section, I will discuss the cello techniques one by one. Note that I did not assign one method to one technique. It depends on the context of the movement. The first one is performing a sustained sound, be it a long note or a tie. I dealt with sustain in three ways. First, I made use of the natural resonance of the marimba. Second, I played roles in the lament, which is in a single-lined melody. The last method uses the mallet station. I'm performing canti primo, secondo, and terzo on the mallet station. Here's the opening of canto primo.
let's take a moment to talk about the mallet station sounds. You can hear that I'm no longer using the Virophone patch. Thanks to my creative friends. They said that I'm not utilizing the mallet station to its full potential if I only use the Virophone patch. The mallet station is a MIDI controller. It doesn't come with any sounds. So all the sounds I'm using here are from the shared library between Logic Pro and MainStage. So I picked a patch for each of the three Kanti. However, Bev thought that the sound of a single patch makes the mallet station sound just like another instrument. In the end, I added channel strips and tried different combinations of patches with the previous and next movements in mind. I won't tell you which sounds I picked, but I hope they will give you a refreshed feeling. The next two techniques are very different on the cello, but I use the same technique on the marimba. First up is Colenio, which appears in the fourth movement marcha. I play using the mallet shaft. I think this is pretty similar to cello playing physically, in which the bow bounces on the strings. Next up is pizzicato. The fifth movement bardone alternates between pizzicato and arco passages. I play with the pizzicato by hitting with the mallet shaft. Although both movements use the same technique, they sound different. In this movement, the phrases are more melodic. I emphasize a little more on the resonance of the marimba bars. The third movement, Serenata, is entirely played with pizzicato. It's impossible for me to play the whole movement using the mallet shaft. Flipping the mallet doesn't work either. It limits the dynamic range and the marimba's resonance. Hence I decided to use more articulate mallets to give the pizzicato timbre. Another technique which I dealt with using mallet choice is Consordino in Bordone. I switched to a pair of softer mallets for that section. The most common technique throughout the piece is harmonics. In some movements, I thought the harmonics are more about extending the range of the instrument than highlighting a different timbre. Hence, I don't treat the harmonics in those instances. However, in the fugue, the repeated appearance of the harmonics figure in perfect fifths cannot be ignored. I had thought of playing on the node. However, the effect varies across different marimba brands. In the end, I settled with dead strokes, which are more consistent. I'm going to play the beginning of the recap in the fugue. The one thing that hasn't changed since 2020 is the harmonics in Marcha. For some reason, I associated the light ringy harmonics with the Tibetan singing bowls patch. For Glissando, the first instance is in Serenata. Back in 2020, I used the pitch bend fader on the mallet station. Here is an excerpt from it. I 
almost wanted to keep this movement on the mount station because of that. However, I decided to play it on the marimba and played a chromatic scale as the glissando instead. The other instance of glissando is in the bordone. It was in the middle of a pizzicato section. Hence, I do a white key gliss using the back of my mallet like that. Last but not least, the drone in bordone. My initial thought was to have a three minute long roll on the marimba. I got my former teacher and friend Matthew to record it for me. The problem is, a roll is not a sustained tone after all. You could hear the beatings from the recording. Then came the idea of bowing the marimba bar this year. I got a bowed tone of a few seconds and tried to extend it to three minutes. Due to my limited knowledge of digital audio workstations, the extended bowed tone sounded like a sine wave. Coincidentally, I was working on my Stockhausen Strahlen project, which requires me to create my own vibraphone sample library. From that experience, I learned that by holding my pedal down, I could loop a section of my sample indefinitely. Since I used two different applications for these two projects, I had to learn how to recreate that on main stage. It took me two hours to figure that out. The execution is also a little tricky here. I have to keep the pedal down while playing the marimba, so I have to move the pedal and switch to my left foot in advance. On that note, we will move on to the recital portion and watch my performance of the Britain Cello Suite, which I did back in April. Hope you'll enjoy my adaptation.